Chip stocks may be down, but the data centers, they're still going up. Market Beat's Jeffrey Neal Johnson joins us with a list of five infrastructure stocks you haven't thought of yet that are still rising, even as chip stocks might be falling. Jeffrey, I'm excited about this list. It's kind of a unique time to be talking about AI stocks, but the way that you're looking at this is kind of looking at the stocks that are supporting the AI growth. And a lot of these names are names we've never covered before. The way I see it or the way I think about it is that every time the market fluctuates because of AI, it's, it's because AI is still developing, it's still under development. Most technologies are being proven out, you know, they'll be volatile, but the underlying technologies that support them tend to stay stable. So what is it volatile? What, what's not volatile in that sector? And the parts that aren't volatile in that sector, of course, are the picks and shovels that I love so much, the things that make it possible for you to get AI. All right, very interesting. Let's get to that first company on the list. And this is about as stable and maybe boring as they come, right? Yeah. This stock has been around for, for a long time. It's Johnson Controls. They initially were an H, like a commercial HVAC, and uh, they did some residential HVAC as well. A lot of things like walk-in coolers and restaurants will have units made by Johnson Control to keep them running. Well, they've gotten rid of most of that business so that they can now focus specifically on AI. So instead of using their, I don't know, 30, 40 years worth of industry knowledge in the HVAC sector to continue that commercialization. They got rid of all that and they're putting all of that time and money and focus and also expertise in cooling, right, um, into the AI data center market. And they've been around forever, which keeps them stable. And this is now more focused specifically in the AI and data center market. The focus seems good and seems promising because of all the demand in AI. But the other question I have is, does that mean that they're losing some of their core business? Is that put their earnings, their stability at risk at all? They are losing some of their core business. So they sold all that to Bosch. It was like $5.6 billion. While they may have lost some business, I don't think that it really matters because they have a record level backlog. So when they brought their focus in, there was enough um, attention drawn to that. The players in the data center market said, well, we want them to do our stuff. So now their, their backlog has grown so much that what they lost when they sold their commercial and residential sector, sectors off, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, that was a really good answer. You had a good defense for that, for sure. Uh, answered the question well. One other thing to look at is just the chart. They've been doing really well. Clearly it shows that their focus and their shift is paying off, but is now a time to be getting in as an investor because they are doing so well. The shift has sent them to record highs, but their uh, price to earnings is somewhere around 23-ish when their competitors are somewhere around 30 to 35-ish. So even though they're hitting record highs and they're doing really well over the past three months, the price to earnings ratio shows that there's still quite a lot of room in there that you could play a little bit. So I would think that you would find a nice dip, you know, a nice dip day and, and create your position that way. Well, this is a good little hidden gem. It's a name we've definitely never talked about on the channel before, but it's doing really well and it sounds promising for the future too. So good first stock, Jeffrey. Let's get on to the second stock that you have. All right, so the next stock that I've got is Eaton. And when you look at data centers, you gotta look at, you need, you need power, you need cooling, you need all of those things. Eaton for the longest time was a, um, like a pure, pure play commercial power. So the big transformers that you need to get power into large buildings, the giant breaker panels inside the buildings, that kind of stuff. They um, did that for a very long time. Very recently, they bought a company called Boyd Thermal. Okay, and Boyd Thermal is a pure play, very similar to what Johnson Control has created. And then also another company, Vertiv, which you guys talk about a lot. Both of those companies are in the cooling side of things. Well, Eaton, through buying Boyd Thermal, now has their hand in the cooling side of things as well. So they control the power coming into the rack, and they also control the cooling coming into the rack. And when you look at the primary needs of a rack mount system, those are your primary needs. It creates a situation for them where they could get even more of the market share than, for instance, Johnson Control, because where Johnson Control is a cooling pure play, Eaton has their hands in like both pies. Okay, very interesting. It sounds promising, it sounds good, but the chart doesn't really reflect that. Uh, Vertiv, you mentioned, is a company that's really been going up and, and having a kind of explosive growth 
experienced the last year. This one is a little bit of a different story. Yeah, this one is a little bit of a different story, but I feel like this is a kind of a buy the dip candidate. It's in a place where you can buy it comfortably and still feel good about it. Interesting. What are analysts saying about the future? Is there expectation for future growth? There is expectation for future growth because of them now integrating Boyd Thermal in. It, it creates a situation where everybody that's using their power side may also start using their cooling side as well. So they have plenty of room to grow. Well, power is definitely a part of the AI story. And we're going to talk part. more about it coming up in just a second. But if you're interested in more energy stocks, specifically in nuclear stocks, make sure to check out this special report on the top seven nuclear stocks to look for in 2026. Thomas Hughes wrote this. It's a really detailed look at these seven different nuclear stocks. So click the link or scan the QR code to get that free report and do a little bit more research into the nuclear sector and all of the power demands that AI is bringing to the table. And that's exactly what we're talking about next, right, Jeffrey? Yes. So the next one we're going to talk about, and I, I've talked about this one a bunch, it's one of my favorite stocks. They have been punished and punished and punished over the past few months. It's a new scale, which is SMR, small modular reactor. Data centers need power. You know, the, the power grid is, it's reaching an abysmal state at this point. The transmission lines are completely maxed out. And if they don't take the time to reinforce the power grid, the AI story in the United States, it just really doesn't have a chance without the grid. And the nice thing is, is that these small module reactors are almost like the band-aid or the stop gap, because we can bring that small module reactor and we can put it right there on your site, plug you straight into it. Now you're up and running. You don't have to wait to get interconnected to the grid. And while you're waiting that six, eight, 10, 12 month time, for your interconnect, you can still be up and running off of your little modular reactor. And then once you actually get interconnected, you can either use that modular power to offset your power bill, or you can continue to use it to power your data center. The SMR thing here over the past few months has been just completely beat up because most of the small modular reactors systems out there are still like complete pipe dreams. But New Scales is not. I mean, these guys, they've got like or humongous amount of orders. They've already got proven technology. They've got their, you know, their, their license from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. It makes zero sense that this stock is as low as it is right now. And clearly you are very bullish on the future of this I'm one. very bullish. You answered one of my questions already, which the, the, the debate has been that the technology isn't there yet, that they're not really having a product ready to go, but you're saying New Scale does. My question is, does that translate into earnings and revenue? Are they there yet? Are they still a pre-revenue company? They're, they're pre-revenue now, but this deal with TVA, I mean, it's up to 70 modular reactors. So it, it, it won't be long. You know, the, the punishment for this company comes from the fact that both AI and small, the small modular reactor sectors are still being created. They're still so fledgling, so baby, that anything will, will cause, the, you know, cause the market to say, well, we don't want that. But New Scale isn't specifically going after data centers. The TVA contract isn't specifically for data centers. It's to reinforce the grid. When you look at that, it becomes a situation of like, this company is getting punished for AI. This company is getting punished for pipe dream small modular reactors, but they already have their small modular reactor built. They've already sold multiple units. Even though they are pre-revenue, they are not far from actual revenue. Let's talk timelines. How long do you think it could be for investors who are looking at this still concerned about a potential risk because there's been so much volatility? How long before this company is really fully launching and commercializing their small nuclear reactors? With the deal with TVA, I mean, they need to roll those six megawatts out pretty fast. And so I would say conservatively two years. I mean, they're saying that the power capacity of the grid needs to double by 2030, right? That's not far. I mean, 2030 is a blink away. Yeah. And so the only way that they're gonna be able to do that is to reinforce it with small modular reactors as they build the grid back up. Very true. I still think that that two year mark even conservatively, means that there's more volatility ahead. Is that fair to say? A lot more volatility ahead. And my favorite thing will be when the market 
wakes up to the small modular reactor story and realizes just how bad off the U.S. grid is. I mean, it, it is a struggling grid. It's at capacity. And, and there's just not a lot of near-term solutions to that problem. And this is one of those near-term solutions that's, that's there and ready. It just needs to be picked up and implemented. And that's, that's the big play for them because they are still being treated as if they are speculative. This government contract with TVA takes that speculation away, in my mind. All right, interesting and certainly a key part of that picks and shovel infrastructure for building out AI in the U.S., absolutely. Well, let's get to the fourth company on your list. Is this still in energy or are we switching gears a little bit? So we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna go, um, you know, we talked about cooling and we talked about like the infrastructure part of cooling, so the pipes and the manifolds and all that other stuff. There's a company out there called Xylem and it's, uh, there's, their ticker symbol's XYL and they are the smart water company. Right. So when you talk about an AI data center, they can use upwards of a million gallons of water in like a given month, like million to two million gallons of water in a month's period of time. I mean, you've looked at your utility bill recently. The, the water is not free. And so their smart metering systems um, are placed throughout the data center to uh, monitor the quality of the water, monitor the temperature of the water, monitor how much water is being used down to say, like maybe the ounce versus gallon level that you would get from your city. So that when the bill comes from the city, they can actually really break that bill down and make sure that, that they are paying what they're supposed to pay so they're not overpaying. It makes the cooling of the data center more intuitive for the operator. Interesting, another new name we haven't heard of yet. Uh, my question with this one is, has it been around, was it being used for something before data centers or was it created specifically for the AI infrastructure build out? That's a great question. They have been around for quite a while they were doing um, residential smart meters and so they actually just recently sold their residential smart metering off because it was a lower margin the residential smart metering metering was lower margin so they sold that department off in order to put more focus into data center cooling and infrastructure cooling and so yeah they have been around a while quite a while but they have become more focused. Are they, where are they at as far as earnings and revenue? Are they a growing company? Uh, any backlog for some of the demand for their, their products? Their demand, their backlog is up about 11% over the past quarter. I anticipate that it will continue to increase and that their backlog will continue to increase because of their more focused look at this point. Yeah, very interesting company. A totally different way to look at AI infrastructure, but it makes sense. It's filling a very important need for the company. How has this stock been performing so far in 2025 and what are the expectations for 2026? They've been running kind of flat lately. In my mind, they are one of those stocks that allow you to sleep well at night. They don't fluctuate a lot. They are kind of boring, but they're also growing is, is a nice place to be when, when you want something solid in your portfolio. Yeah, a different way to look at investing in AI and maybe a more stable way to look at it as well. well let's get to that fifth and final name on your list of AI infrastructure stocks that are really kind of obscure, maybe you haven't thought of yet as you're looking at infrastructure plays. So my next one is gonna be Quanta Services and their ticker symbol is PWR. Quanta Services is a manpower provider provider and specifically they provide highly skilled labor and the highly in demand labor that is needed to connect this equipment up. So when you buy these transformers from Eaton, when you buy new scales, big modular reactor or small modular reactor, you're gonna need somebody that's capable of handling six gigawatts of power without blowing themselves up. And Quanta Services is the the leading place to get that manpower. And they have come out multiple times with reports saying that there is so much demand for that specialized skill in America that they, they just can't find enough people to do the work. And so they have a massive backlog of um, work that needs to be done. As all this infrastructure comes online, their backlog should only continue to grow because they are the number one provider of manpower in that sector. This is such a unique way to look at AI infrastructure, but people are absolutely a part of building out the AI infrastructure. And I think it makes a lot of sense that the electricians, all those people are in such high demand, also makes kind of interesting. AI discussion is always about it's taking jobs, it's taking jobs away. Well, electricians and the physical labor are jobs that cannot be taken away by AI. These are jobs that we need the hands, we need the people to do the work. It's a really interesting company. I'm curious to see, have they seen that boost already? Because there's already 
already that demand out there? Are they are they seeing that reflected in their earnings and in their stock? You are definitely seeing that. So the, I feel like that this is kind of like the sector winner. It does trade with the sector, you know, so if Eaton and Johnson Controls are going down, this stock is also going to go down, but it's not going to struggle as much as the other ones because you know this is a situation where without them the rest of the thesis just doesn't exist you know you were talking about the uh the labor force and ai ai will take lots and lots of jobs but it will also create lots and lots of jobs and this is like you said this is a perfect example of that you need the the, the power to do it it's interesting to see it's already showing up in this company uh, and how well they're doing so many interesting perspectives to look at today i'm trying to think about which one to add to purchase buys and they're all very interesting i like johnson controls because they're a company that's doing really well already they're growing a lot they're seeing that uh, i think 50 percent growth this year so that's one that i think is really interesting but i think today for bridges buys i'm gonna go with your favorite, I think New Scale, simply because of the price point right now. I do think it is a good buy the dip opportunity. Um, it is a risk though. I, I don't think this is going to be a slow and steady growth story or an automatic winner. I think it could even pull back potentially from where it is here. So I, I'm a, it's a little bit of a riskier one, but I think long-term um, it could have some good potential. So I think so too. I'm in New Scale. I, it's my morning drop. Every morning you go, you look, New Scale's dropped five or 6%. It kind of recovers throughout the day, but it is is so depressed from the 57 high that it was at recently and the 57 high that it was at recently wasn't like some kind of crazy pop it would take a, a a very minimal catalyst to start pushing this stock back up because it's it's repressed it's definitely repressed so i think that's a perfect pick for you all right sounds good jeffrey thank you and if you haven't checked out bridges spies yet go to marketbeat.com bridget or you can scan the qr code or click the link in the description check out that watch list i've got some more speculative names like new scale i've got other big names on there like amd and nvidia you can track to see how well all of the stocks that we're talking about on market beat perform and move over time that's what that watch list is all about just to see how things do. Jeffrey, thank you for this unique list. I'd love to hear from you out there. What do you think of some of these names? Are a lot of them new to you? Have you thought of any of them before? Do you think that they are truly interwoven into the AI data center build out story? Or are they just unique names to consider? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks again for watching everyone. As always, happy investing.